this is not a political conversation. Let me start that way. This is, some people love this, this plan, some people hate this law. Um, obviously, that's a, um, a, a hot topic in Washington these days, sadly so. And um, we are not going to get into that grimy debate. Um, what we do want to do is discuss the provisions of a law that has been enacted so that people have a better sense of what it means to them. Florida is the number two uh, state in the nation for uninsured people under 65. That's not about the Affordable Care Act, that's demos. That comes to 3.8 million people or 25% of the state's population. Miami-Dade County is the second highest county with 34.4% uninsured. Um, under the Affordable Care Act, we reported the other day that there are 141 health care plans on the exchange in Miami-Dade and 136 in Broward. Um, prices are slightly higher in Miami-Dade. I don't think that's going to shock anybody. I'm going to give you my summary of what the Affordable Care Act law is. It is a program to increase availability of affordable health care by significantly broadening the risk pool. It's a business conversation. Plans are provided by private insurance companies. Companies and individuals are encouraged to participate through a series of incentives and penalties, but participation is not mandatory. All plans offered must include some basic provisions. That's what this is. It's, it's a business plan. Let's start with um, uh, Everett Wilson. Ackerman is uh, Florida's largest law firm, and uh, as a result, uh, we end up representing basically national, state, and local businesses, uh, which are employers, and obviously they have to uh, come into compliance with the, uh, with the Affordable Care Act. Uh, now, I also represent, as a healthcare attorney, I also represent all the different types of participants in the healthcare industry, whether they be insurance companies, uh, all sorts of medical providers, uh, medical device manufacturers. So, everybody that is in the healthcare industry uh, that, in essence, is going to participate in the Affordable Care Act are our clients that we represent. As with any large government program, there are business opportunities that are created by the program itself. And in this particular instance, uh, since the marketplace of, health, of covered health care services is being expanded, and like I said, in Florida, it's uh, 2.8 million that are currently uninsured, so that's a big ex expansion. Uh, there are business opportunities for entrepreneurs, existing health care providers, to really look at the programs, look at this expansion of marketplace, and try and participate in that expansion. John Cantillo is the Vice President of Underwriting at Coventry Aetna. That sort of underscores one of the points here, which is all of the plans that are included in the Affordable Care Act marketplaces are provided by private insurers. Aetna is, is committed to engaging communities to educate uh, about the law, whether it's individuals, consumers, or, or, or employers. And most recently, I've been involved in several town hall meetings, and folks are really interested to get practical advice. What does this mean to me? Um, you know, avoid the politics. Let me know how I can navigate this system, and let me decide for myself what makes sense. And from an Aetna and Coventry standpoint, we're committed to providing that information to, to individuals and businesses. Roger Gonzalez is um, president of National Marketing Group. I think the law has some very good provisions. The mandate, uh, we got to cover 10 essential health benefits, no pre-existing conditions or subsidies. Wellness is basically free, no good payment. Uh, this much I know, people are interested in rates, benefits, it's my doctor in the plan, who's going to pay the premium and service. And the simple aspect of insurance is spreading the risk. You take money from, one, from one, one group of people, the healthy ones, to help underwrite the cost of another group of people, the not so healthy ones. So I think one of the biggest concerns for the insurance company, companies and the government is 
are there going to be enough healthy peoples, people joining the system to upset the amount of not so healthy people entering the system? Another concern is, uh, are there going to be enough primary care physicians to provide medical care for the millions of people joining the system? That's to me is a huge concern. And then I think you should know that the delivery system of the provider network is different in and out of the exchanges. And doctors is a key component when you're choosing a plan, so forth. So I sincerely hope that we can answer and clear all your concerns today. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yolan uh, Hernandez Suarez. As a uh, Associate Dean at the College of Medicine at FIU, our job is to train the physicians who will be serving in this new uh, world order. Our medical schools have the opportunity to build a curriculum that is um, absolutely tailor-made for the way that doctors are going to function uh, in the setting of value-based compensation. Um, in the way I was trained, you know, at Hopkins, arguably one of the best medical schools in the country, is frankly no longer the way that physicians need to function. Doctors are going to have to have a very deep understanding of outcomes and population-based medicine in order to thrive in a system of value-based compensation. And so part of what we've been able to do is mold our curriculum to give doctors those skill sets. The other thing you're going to find is that doctors are always going to have to be working at the top of their skill set. So they're really going to be team leaders of care providers that consist of ARNPs and PAs and nurses and an assortment of folks who are going to be delivering care to you. It's no longer going to be that primacy of the physician and you in a room. And what we're hoping is that that brings even more value to patients. The other thing we've come to figure out is that health doesn't happen in the doctor's office. So the social determinants of health, the environment in which we live, the very fact that your city has planned for parks and places for people to um, attain a healthy lifestyle means that your city really gets what it means. By the time you come to the doctor's office, health has already happened. And so our doctors also need to understand that they need to be with you with organizations such as this to be advocates for health, to allow patients to really be empowered to take a hold of their own health. And finally, I do believe that everybody at this table recognizes how regulated the health industry is and how involved the government is. And it's only becoming more so. Most physicians who are training now will be employees. They will not be private practitioners in solo practice. Um, except most likely in rural areas. So what does it mean for doctors to be employed by health systems, by hospitals, by multidisciplinary groups? Um, we're going to have to have partnerships with payers and lawyers to understand how we can thrive in a regulated business to get down to the point where we can give good service to patients.